So let's talk about commercial viability. On the surface, uh, it's what is marketable? Um, what kind of record label sell? What, um, what, what makes something a product? Well, that's one way to look at it, but ultimately let's, let's expand it. Let's, um, let's take commercially viable and, and just sort of look at it as what is appealing? Uh, what, what about, what about the process of making a record uh, and producing a record, um, make something appealing? Well, you got to look at, there's a lot of different things you got to look at, but so let's start more on an internal level, um, with, um, the intention that the artist wants to have for their career. Now. An artist may want to have radio hits and go play shows um, to an audience that they've, you know, gained through a radio single, that kind of success. Or, but that's not that's just one that's just one avenue. And actually, radio is kind of an old older format. I, um, we're much more in the world of streaming, so. Um, that's a that's a slightly different consideration. In a radio format, um, you know the things that the things that you, you're going to get told and have to consider are your song shouldn't be more than three and a half minutes. Uh, it should have a short and engaging introduction to the song, and that doesn't necessarily mean that it needs to be musical. It, if you start on a verse, it's just that 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 first lyric or that that first vocal. Uh, just needs to draw the listener in. Um, you want to get to the chorus before a minute has passed. Um, you don't really want musical sections that are, are too long. I mean, and that's, I'm talking about like current modern radio. If you look at the, at the radio formats of the 70s, 60s, 70s, 80s, there's different, there's different criteria, but we're kind of focusing on now. Um, well, to be commercially viable, um, to have an opportunity in that space, then those are the things you need to think about. If you make a song that's five minutes long, there's a really good chance that you won't get on the radio. Um, so that's something to consider. Uh, Sp Spotify. Um, Spotify keeps analytics and shares them with record labels. Um, and so this becomes a topic of discussion where you have skip rates and um, it's not just Spotify, it's just all kinds of online consumption. YouTube is a, would be another platform, medium, um, where if you don't have the listener's attention within the first 7 to 14 seconds, I think is, are the numbers, then your music will get skipped. So what does that, what does that say? Well, you, you, you need to consider these things in terms of if you if you want to make a record that has um, that type of um, opportunity. Now, if you're an artist that is more concerned about um, or would like to have a career based more on touring and performing, well, then you don't necessarily need to follow those same guidelines because you can have a five minute song as or a 10 minute song, really, as long as um, you have five or 10 minutes of music, uh, that engages the listener. Um, that's fine. You can have a, you can have a great career. There are, there are plenty of successful artists that have never had a radio hit. They, um, they've had, they have kind of a, a cult following or just a really strong fan base and they go out and they engage with their, their fan base a lot. They, they, they go and perform. Um, so sort of, I mean, talking about all these things, it's what is commercially viable. It is in terms of record making. It's the considerations that you need to have when you're putting together a, a piece of music um, or a record. Um, you want to keep the listener engaged and you want to um, have something that isn't overly repetitive. Repetition in music is um, 
is something we love too, but it has to feel engaging. I've been stuck on this song um, by Tamiya. It's called Leave It Smoking. It's like a, it's a, um, I, I guess you would call it, it's kind of a dancey R&B song. It's very soulful, um, but it's the, it's one drum loop. It's one drum pattern, um, but it's very, it's very danceable and engaging. Um, and there's a lot of the instrumentation. There's a couple keyboards on it, um, a bass, um, and her vocals. Um, there are a lot of vocal layers at times. It's the song is like a chorus the whole time. It just, it moves through all these hooks, but the, the, the foundation of it, that drum pattern, um, is just, it's the same the whole time. And it's everything else that works through the, the arrangement that changes and makes it powerful. Um, you know, uh, so, you know, repetition in music is a great thing, but it has to, but even though there's a very repetitious part about that song and that production, um, the vocal hooks are, are constantly coming and going and changing and the way the instrumentation plays off of it, uh, it, it, um, it keeps you moving and engaged the whole time. Um, so does that necessarily make it a radio hit or a Spotify hit or YouTube hit? I don't know, but it, um, it makes it viable. It makes it, uh, it makes it a great record. And, um, these things are important considerations when you are, are figuring out how you're going to execute your record and your production. You need to think about who you want your audience to be and how you want to go out and engage your audience. You know, something I come across when, I, when I'm working on a structure or an arrangement with an artist in the studio is, um, navigating the, the 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 discussions of when um maybe a section is too long you, you i kind of you kind of you come across that more often than a section being too short um or uh a section not in, that doesn't exist i mean maybe you feel like uh after the first chorus there's a bit of music that's needed um so y you know you need to um kind of come up with some new music uh, or new a new a new section of the song or maybe you're able to borrow uh, a, um, uh, something from somewhere else in the song or maybe instead of the chorus going right into the verse maybe maybe you start the verse but the singing doesn't start away you just kind of create a little bit of space um, but the point I was trying to make um, is that it's gonna be really hard to draw someone in unless there's an element of it that uh, makes that that beginning of the song really engaging like the beat is really um, is really danceable and you just want to establish that vibe um, you know the electronic music uh, EDM music that you don't have vocals until certain sections like later hooks in the song or or later sections of the song you don't it's some types of music that's that's the vibe but um, uh, you have to Often I have these conversations with um, with artists, and you're working on a song where it's like, well, we don't need this. We don't need this uh, this bridge to be this long. It just we just need a. a, a it doesn't need to be 16 measures. It can be eight measures. Um, we don't need to go yet yeah, because we don't need to go through this progression uh, twice. Um, it sort of it sort of loses momentum and interest in the second half. Sometimes the uh, consideration for being commercially viable is in the instrumentation choices. Um, take, for instance, James Bay's record. Um, his first record, uh, he was coming from, it wasn't very widely known at all, but he did not have a band. He didn't have a, um, he didn't have a, a band sound uh, uh, built around him. He was a singer-songwriter who who played acoustic guitar. I mean, the desire was to have, um, something that, that sounded a bit bigger, um, and more organic ar around a band sound, but he, he, uh, he didn't really have, he didn't really have that going into that project. And so the choices that were made sort of stayed true to the, where the songs started, but they, 
they were they were done in such a way that it wasn't too rock. Um, it you know that the production, even though it's um, bass, drums, and electric guitar, it it was it was sort of um, decisions were made to not make it too rock to kind of, to to keep it in the the the, the sort of the singer songwriter realm um, a little bit more open and contemporary keep the focus on the song and James voice and not put it too far in a in, in sort of a rock category uh, make it too too rock and roll sounding there's elements of that but um, it comes down to it's like some of the choices we made to not have the guitars be overly distorted or too many layers of guitars um, and just sort of some of the tonality of things um, and how how dense some of the some of the instrumentation and choices were um, putting a fo putting a focus on on the voice and the song uh, and making that making that bridge bridging from you know from the acoustic solo acoustic origins of the songs to to making them f full full band bigger bigger productions so in the in the instance of james bay and making that record commercially viable taking a, a solo acoustic artist sort of troubadour singer songwriter um, and creating a sound and a platform for him that could go to radio and that would also translate to him playing uh, in front of larger audiences um, and really filling a room uh, it, the commercial viability had to sort of be uh, weighed weighed into that, and what what will what will serve his songs, um, showcase his voice, his guitar playing, but but make a song like "Hold Back the River" uh, and uh, "Let It Go" um, and "Craving." Make these make these songs that have a bit of a different. Um, feel to them, different production aesthetic across those songs. Uh, what will make that feel like a band sound, but will make it feel like that it will appeal to a lot of people. Um, the considerations there were to not make it too rock and roll, because if, if, um, if Hold Back the River was made to be too much of a rock song, um, it's a little bit more soulful. Um, it, it, it is in the rock genre, but it's not like a hard rock song. That wouldn't have obviously need to serve the song first, but that would not have sat well on the same album as Let It Go, which is um, which is much simpler. Um, it's um, it's based primarily about a, around a single guitar um, and a vocal performance. There's there's drums and bass and, and, and vocals and another guitar part that comes in, but it's much simpler. Um, and the, the sound of that record, Let It Go, doesn't have a full drum set the way some of the other songs have. Um, but it's like tying all those things together, making it commercially viable, serving the artist. Um, these are the things you need to consider. And, um, be able to understand where um, the audience, the, the most powerful way to reach the largest audience. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to say that being commercially viable, as I sort of defined it earlier, it's, it's not necessarily the success of selling a lot of records. It's just the success of engaging an audience and being accessible, um, relatable. Uh, so, well, let's dr let's just drop the commercial part of it. Let's just like let's let's just say it is being viable. Um, it's important that that's a a big consideration, um, and and understanding where your vision is for how you want your career to unfold. Um, I don't think anything that we've heard and been influenced by as listeners and musicians and inspired to be in music 
at least in the majority, it's because of popular music. It's because of um, records and songs that were made that a lot of people have heard. Um, and that doesn't, that doesn't mean that you're a sellout. Um, it's not about selling out. It's not about conforming to something else. It, it's not conforming to what the radio model is or what the, the skip rate of Spotify is. Those are things to consider if that's where you want your music to have an opportunity.